Why is Goblin Piledriver never sad? Because he has protection from the blues. <laughs> Before we get into today's game, I want to talk about the sponsors for my channel. Card Conduit is the best way to sell your unused magic cards. Whether you've got a box of unsorted bulk, or a complete and alphabetized set, there's a great option for everyone. With a payout averaging 19% better than using any one buy list, and that's after fees are applied, you can rest assured you'll get the best bang for your buck. If you're a skeptic like me, their easy customer service and detailed reports make the whole interaction transparent and safe. And if you use the affiliate link in the description below, or the promo code MTGMUDSTA, you'll save 10% off their fees. And 401 Games, Canada's one-stop shop for trading cards, board games, and hobby supplies. Not to mention an easy to use and great online buy list. And if you use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, your first purchase of MTG sealed and singles will be 5% off. And Dragon Shield, the strongest sleeves for your strongest deck. So be sure to use the code MUDSTA or the affiliate link down below to save 5% on your next order. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's patron shoutout goes to Wes Allen. Thanks Wes for your continued support through Patreon. In today's game, we have Mika, Max, and Ian rejoining me. Mika is playing his ninth Doctor and Adric Christmas deck that I gave him, but he's tweaked it and upgraded it and made it more his own. It's got Exotic Orchard, Island, Reliquary Tower, Relic of Legends, Thought Vessel, Legacies Allure, and Aether Eyes. Max is playing Elish Norn. He's keeping Four Planes, Esper Sentinel, Staff of Nin, and Swords to Plowshares. Ian is playing Volo Guide to Monsters, and he's keeping Command Tower, Two Islands, Forest, Tyrite Sanctum, and Razor Forerunners, and Mystic Reflections. I am playing my Grease Fang list, which hopefully will be online on Moxfield at this point, and I keep Planes, Urborg, Esper Sentinel, Reckoner Bankbuster, Cranial Plating, Knight Paladin, and Bartolome del Presido. Mika wins the die roll and starts us off. Mika draws and plays an island. Ian's also got an island for turn and passes it to me. I play a planes and I cast Esper Sentinel, which Max isn't so happy about. Oh, okay. turn one Esper Sentinel, really? Good start. My turn? Yep. I'm gonna planes for turn. You go Tap one. Two knuckles with this one. Esper Sentinel. Oh, cute. <laughs> wow. cute. Twinsies. Mika drops an exotic orchard and is able to tap it for blue thanks to Ian. He pays two blue for Legacy's Allure and doesn't pay one for either of the Sentinel triggers, which has Max and I drawing a card. Ian just draws and plays a forest. I play an Urborg for turn, which then lets me cast Bartolomeu del Presido. Going to combat, I hit Ian for one with my Esper Sentinel. Max has a Plains and casts Pearl Medallion, drawing me a card because he can't pay the one. Mika becomes more alluring as he adds a counter to Legacy's allure, and he then plays a mountain. He's then able to cast the Ninth Doctor, who, since he has haste, he swings it at Max. Ian's got a forest return, and channels Beseju, blowing up Pearl Medallion on Max's side. With nothing else, he passes. I play a Bright Climb Pathway as my land for turn, and then bring out Cranial Plating, not paying the one for Max's Sentinel, so he draws a card. I then pay to equip the plating onto my sentinel, and moving to combat, I hit Mika with it, and I pass to Max. Maximus plays a planes for turn, and then casts Elish Norn. No, not that one. Not that one either. Yeah, this one. He then goes at Ian with the sentinel, and passes turn. Mika gets to add two counters to his allure since he gets a second upkeep after he untaps the ninth doctor, and then draws for turn. He plays an island for turn, and then casts Thought Vessel in his main phase. This lets Max and I draw a card from our Esper Sentinels, and once that's done, Mika casts Relic of Legends and passes. Ian has an island for turn, and pays 3 mana for an Underseller Myconid. This makes a Saprolene as it comes in, and after that, he passes. I play a Swamp, and then bring out a Bankbuster Reckoner. It comes in with 3 counters, and Max gets to draw a card because I didn't pay the tax for it. Combat is uneventful, as I don't swing and just pass to Max. Max has a planes for turn, and then pays 4 life and some mana, casting Norn's Annex. He doesn't pay the 3 for my Sentinel, so I get to draw a card. Going to combat, Elish Norn goes at Mika, who before leaving the attacker's step, has Mika sacrificing the allure and targets Elish Norn to try and steal it. Max responds to the ability on the stack, casting Unbound Potential. 
he picks the mode to give Elish Norn and his Sentinel a plus one plus one counter. This fizzles the steel, and Mika then takes four commander damage. Max then passes turn, and during Max's end step, Mika taps his commander to untap the relic. Mika gets his two upkeeps that basically do nothing, and draws for turn, and plays a reliquary tower. He then plays a Rite of the Raging Storm so he can give everyone a Rager on their turn, and he doesn't pay the Sentinel taxes, so I draw a card, and so does Max. He passes after that. Mika gives Ian a Rager on his upkeep, and Ian then draws for turn. He plays a Forest, and goes to combat. He swings the Lightning Rager at Max, paying the two life to the Annex. Max then blocks with Elish Norn, and Ian takes another two, rather than pay one for Norn's trigger. Ian then passes, and during his end step, I use the Bank Buster, remove a counter, and draw a card. My turn has me playing a Tainted Field, and I then cast a Knight Paladin. I don't pay the Sentinel tax for Max, so he draws a card, and as the Paladin enters, each of my opponents take four. This has Max's Elish Norn triggering, and since I can't pay the one, I take two. I then move to my end step, and discard Necron Monolith. We also realize that Mika should have given me a Rager at that point, but we shortcut and fix it by saying I would have just sacrificed it to Bartolome, and we pass to Max's turn after that. Max gets his Rager, and plays a Plains for turn. Six mana gets him a Staff of Nin, and this draws me a card because he can't pay for the Sentinel tax. He then goes to combat, and he swings the Rager at me, and Elshnorn goes at Mika. Both of us take the hits, and Max then passes turn. During Max's end step, Mika once more uses his commander to untap the relic. Mika gets two upkeeps from untapping his commander, which nets him a double rager, and he draws for turn. He plays a mountain, and then goes to combat. He swings one rager at me, and one at Ian. Before moving to blocks, I use Bartolome to crew up the Knight Paladin. As we move to blocks, Ian casts Mystic Reflection, and targets my Knight Paladin with it, and pays the two for Max's Sentinel trigger, but not mine, so I get to draw a card. I announce I'll block with my Paladin Knight, while Ian blocks with the Myconid, and takes some trample damage. With the Myconid dying, it makes him a Saperling token, which is replaced with the Knight Paladin token. With that coming in, it deals four to each of Ian's opponents. This triggers Elish Norn from Max, and he doesn't pay the one, and takes two. Mika then moves to a second main phase, casting Adric, and passing. Ian gets a Rager, and draws for turn. He plays an Island, and then casts Volo, Guide to Monsters. Going to combat, he crews up the Knight Paladin with a Sapperling token, and swings the Knight Paladin at Mika, and the Rager goes at me. Before moving to blocks, I crew up my Paladin, and block the Lightning Rager, and with nothing else, Ian passes. I play a Swamp for turn, and use a main phase Swords to Plowshares to take out Elish Norn. I don't pay for the Sentinel trigger though, so Max draws a card, and then gains some life as she's exiled. I then bring out Grease Fang, and once they're out, cast in Tomb, and go into my library to find a thing to put to my graveyard. I decide to put Reaver Titan into my graveyard, and I then move to combat. Moving to combat, Grease Fang triggers, and I target the Reaver Titan. No one disrupts this, so it comes back, and I then crew up the two Warhammer 40,000 mechs, and I move to declare my attackers. I swing the Rager at Ian, the Knight Paladin at Mika, and the Reaver Titan at Max. With the Reaver Titan attacking, each of my opponents take 5. However, before moving to blocks, Mika casts Aetherize. He doesn't pay for either Sentinel trigger, letting both Max and I draw a card. After the draws, but before letting the Aetherize resolve, I sacrifice the two mechs to Bartolome, adding more counters to him. Max then moves to ping the Sentinel with his Staff of Nin, and I sacrifice that as well. With my combat step essentially fogged, I then pass through my phases, and discard down to 7. Max draws his 2 and gets a Rager, then goes to his main phase, and then plays a Plains. He swings the Lightning Rager at me, which I take. In his second main phase, he pays 2 mana for Contagion Clasp, and as it comes in, gives Bartolome a minus 1 minus 1 counter. With nothing else, Max passes. Mika untaps and gets his extra upkeep trigger from the Ninth Doctor. He also uses Adric to get a second trigger from the right, which makes him a total of three 5-1 Lightning Ragers, and he then draws for turn. He goes to combat, swinging one at me and two at Max. He's able to pay for the Annex ability with his Relic and Exotic Orchard. Before moving to blocks, 
Max pings one of the ragers to death with his staff of Nin, and then uses Path to Exile on the other. I, on the other hand, am just a simple magic player, and I take 5 to the face. Mika then goes to find a basic, and passes after that. Ian plays a command tower for turn, and then casts a Quandrix Cultivator, which, because it doesn't share a creature type with anything else he has on the board, gets him a copy from Volo. With them both coming in, Ian gets to find a forest or an island twice. Once he's done ramping, he passes to me after that. I am given a Lightning Rager, and I play a Swamp. I declare I'll move to combat, and before letting me leave the main phase, Max uses Swords to Plowshares, and targets Greasefang. With that on the stack, I cast Village Rites, sacrificing Greasefang, drawing two cards. I then swing Bartolome at Max, paying the one white for his Norn's Annex. Max, who seemingly has nothing but removal in hand, uses Generous Gift to take up my Vampire. I then move to my second main phase, and play an unlicensed Hearth, and pass to Max. Max draws his 2, and gets a Lightning Rager. He plays a Plains for turn, and then taps 7 mana for a Darkseal Splicer. With it entering, he makes 3 3-3 three, three Phyrexian Golem tokens, that also have Indestructible, with the Splicer being out. He swings the Lightning Rager at me, and once more, I just take the hit. Max then passes, and during his end step, Mika does his trick with a relic to tap down his commander. Mika's upkeep has him using Adric again to get a total of 3 Lightning Ragers, and he then draws for turn. He goes to combat, doing much the same as last time, paying the white to swing 2 Ragers at max, and 1 goes at me. I block with my Elephant token, but take 2 from Trample, while Max takes 1 out with his Staff of Nin, and puts the 3 3 3 indestructible Golem tokens in front of the other one, and prevents all damage. Mika's got nothing else, and passes to Ian. Ian untaps, and gets his Rager on his upkeep. He then draws for turn, and Max fixes his board so it's easier to visualize. Ian then casts an End Razor 4 Runners, aka the budget-friendly Crater Hoof, which because of Volo, gets him another copy. With the creatures still in the stack, he uses the Sapperling to group the Knight Paladin, and then the copy comes in first, pumping his board, and then the original comes in after that, pumping the board, plus the copy as well. Ian then goes to combat, and swings the Knight Paladin, which is a 10-10 now, at me, and the rest go at max. Both of us will get taken out, and Ian does take damage from Norn's Annex though, because he can't pay the white. Ian then passes, and during his end step, Mika does his Relic and Ninth Doctor combo thing, and moves to his turn. Mika untaps, and on his upkeep, gets another one, plus uses Adric to make a third copy of the Lightning Rager token. He then plays a Fire Diamond, and then a Shrine of Boundless Growth. Moving to combat, Mika has only one direction to swing his tokens at, and does so. Before moving to blocks, Ian crews up his Knight Paladin, and blocks one apiece with his Forerunners and the Knight Paladin, taking no damage. Mika knows he's dead on the crackback, scooping it up to Ian. Game review time. This game was 53 minutes and 50 seconds, and my goodness, do the Warhammer 40,000 vehicles just continue to impress. Almost every single one of them is incredible, and it takes very little to crew them up, as we saw with just a Sapperling crewing up the Knight Paladin. I don't know what it's going to take for them to stop being some of my favorite cards to find in Greasefang and Shorakai, but it's going to take a lot. Unfortunately for Mika, Adric and the Ninth Doctor didn't do a whole heck of a lot. That legacy allure play was pretty sweet, but Max had the perfect answer for it, which while brutal for Mika, was sweet to see in action. I think Max's Elish Norn deck isn't just a pillow fort deck, I believe it's focused heavily around incubating and getting creatures that have plus one plus one counters on it and proliferating, however I feel like this is the second time we've seen it, and it hasn't really done very much, which is unfortunate. I think Volo is the perfect example that any spell you cast in Magic becomes significantly better if you get to copy it. He didn't even copy that many creatures, just the Quantrix Cultivator and the End Razor Forerunners, and having two 7-7s seven that come in and one becomes a 9-9, nine nine, plus pumps your entire board by plus 4 plus 4 is just nuts. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, but it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, Friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.